Taylor. Firecracker. <laughs> it's downhill from here, folks. <laughs> Uh, as Taylor said, I'm a Bucknell alumna, and I'm, uh, it's always good to be home, even when it's snowing. <laughs> Thank you. I graduated from Bucknell in 1953. The situation then was freshman women had to be in at 8 o'clock. The rest of us women had to be in at 11. Uh, there was a house mother on every floor and sometimes two. So uh, uh, out of that came Philip Roth and Portnoy's complaint. Go figure. <laughs> uh, uh, my topic today is can you, can you jump start, can you kick start creativity? And the answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. But to get ready for today, I uh, interviewed about 40 people. Uh, I, talked to novelists and, and poets and composers and painters, uh, scientists, doctors, lawyers. I even interviewed some Bucknell professors and, uh, and of course, some Bucknell students. And so I, I'd like to share where we came out. Uh, before we plunge in, though, I, I must tell you that I am a, a writer, but I'm an advertising copywriter. Uh, and I started my career in the 1960s, the sexy, sexist era of television's Mad Men. And uh, uh, I wrote uh, my book, Mad Women. I wrote Mad Women a couple of years ago. And because of the enormous success, it's a real story of what it was like to be an advertising woman in that era. And because of the enormous success of Mad Men, I was interviewed everywhere by ABC and CBS and NBC. My two daughters were very impressed. I even made the Huffington Post. They thought that was important. But I, I began to anticipate that the media was always going to ask me the same three questions. They would say, were women treated like second class citizens back then? And I'd say, well, not all the time. And they'd say, did you guys actually have three martini lunches every day? And I'd say, well, not every day. <laughs> And then they lean forward and ask very confidentially, uh, was there all that much sex in the office? And I'd say, yes. <laughs> we had a good time. <laughs> uh, uh, those were the days. <laughs> Now, now we're going to get serious and plunge into five ways to kickstart creativity. Uh, th these, these ideas have stood me in very good stead as a, as a, a copywriter and a creative person, uh, and I hope some of them will work for you. Uh, the first one is, do your homework. My old boss, David Ogilvy, legendary ad man, used to counsel us, when you're about to write an ad, First, immerse yourself in the research, and then immerse yourself in a bottle of wine. <laughs> Do your homework. Uh, my favorite anecdote, I think, about doing your homework is 20 years ago, I was elected to the Board of Governors of the American Institute of Architects. Now, by constitution, the AIA has 42 directors. 40 of them have to be architects and two of them must be non-architects, OK? The year I was elected, the other non-architect was Dr. Jonas Salk, the discoverer of the polio vaccine. And of course, he was elected not only because he was a great, great uh, discoverer, but he also founded the famous Salk Institute in San Diego, and he hired the wonderful architect Louis Kahn and gave him carte blanche to design it. And so the architects love Dr. Salk. I was elected, you might ask why. I was elected because that year the architects wanted to do a big national advertising campaign, and it was cheaper to put me on the board than to hire me. So <laughs> there I was. Anyway, Dr. Dr. Salk uh, told us 
that he was working. He knew there was a polio vaccine to be discovered. He knew it, and he worked for years in the, at the University of Pittsburgh in this dark, dank basement laboratory, and it just wouldn't gel. And then well, he took two weeks off, and he went to Assisi, the St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, and there he said, in this sunlight, Eureka, the idea for the polio vaccine came to him whole. And, and I think, however, that he had done his homework. He was ready to come up with that idea. He could have gone from the sunlight into the basement, and he still would have come up with the idea. Uh, uh, Louis Pasteur has a wonderful quote. He says, chance falls upon the prepared mind. Chance falls upon the prepared mind. I, I, that's a big help to me. I think we all know that uh, Newton had been working on the theory of gravity for a long time before he sat under that, that apple tree. OK, Kickstarter number two is get moving. Uh, uh, for some reason, motion helps creativity. Mozart said he would work and work and work on a symphony, and it wouldn't come together. And then he'd go for a walk in the woods. And suddenly, at the end of the walk, he'd have the whole symphony playing in his head. Uh, Joyce Carol Oates tells us that she writes all her novels while running in city streets. She doesn't see the city streets, but it's all inside her head. And, there come her novels. Uh, mindless motion seems to work. That's why so many of us get ideas while we're in the shower. Uh, an old boss of mine, a wonderful, he, he was a wonderful creative director, and he used to say to me quite seriously, now, Jane, I want you to think about this idea while you're shaving. And I would say to him quite seriously, yes, I will, I will do that. <laughs> So uh, get moving. It works. Uh, number three is connect, connect, connect. Uh, and you've heard a lot about collaboration today. Uh, Joe Tranquilo, of course, is doing pioneering work in collaboration. And I got to know Joe as we worked together uh, on this event today. And by the way, Dean, Dean Buffington, who is in a great new friend of mine asked me very graciously if there were anything I would like to take back to New York as the memento of today. And I said, yes, please, just one thing. Joe Tranquilo. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Keith. <laughs> uh, where was I? Yes. <laughs> Uh, collaboration. Collaboration in the sciences, in many of the sciences, has become increasingly not only important but essential because of the amount of data that's out there, uh, the complexity of, of the techniques and the various sciences involved, and uh, Nobel Prizes, the number of Nobel Prizes awarded in the sciences uh, to teams of two or three has dramatically increased in the last 15 and 20 years. However, no Nobel Prize has yet been awarded to a team in uh, literature. I, I haven't heard yet of a team that's written the great tragedy. Could happen. Uh, and uh, the, uh, I, for, this, for this talk today, I interviewed Gary Soika, your former Bucknell president, uh, who is a microbiologist. And he said when he began his career, he could do a whole project from start to finish by himself. But now he absolutely needs collaborators because of the complexity and the data. And he also uh, used archaeology as an example. He said a traditional, a traditional area like archaeology, look at the enormous uh, amount of, of special, specializa specialization that goes into it. You need paleobotanists and ground penetrating radar and seismology, not to mention such little items as a you know, history of art and architecture. Uh, and so uh, collaboration, increasingly important. Keith Buffington uh, talked to me about another kind of collaboration, which is within ourselves. It's getting the various areas of the brain, your data gathering, 
area and your, 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 your creative area and your speech and language area all to work together. Uh, and apparently, the best way to make that happen is in isolation uh, and, and when, you, when, you're, when you're most private. Uh, I, a number of the creative people I talked to said they did their best work when they were most isolated and most lonely. That's, that's tough advice, but there it is. Uh, look for something bad to happen. It doesn't necessarily have to be cataclysmic, although I think we all know great creative work has come out of prison cells and concentration camps. Negativity can be a great force for, uh, for, for, helping, for helping creative things to happen. A small anecdote. When I was working in the 1960s as a copywriter, you men who ran everything in those days put us women copywriters into a sort of category ghetto of what we could work on and what was appropriate for us. Uh, like baby food you thought was appropriate for us. Uh, there were some things you would not let us work on. For instance, you wouldn't let us work on cars because you figured we didn't know how to drive. You figured you wouldn't let us work on finance because you figured we didn't know how to balance our checkbooks. And you would not, by any stretch, let us work on alcohol or beer because that's what you used to seduce us and you thought we didn't understand that at all. So. <laughs> So, uh, for, 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 some, for some reason, uh, uh, any kind of, of negative pressure can be a, a real help to creativity. So look for something just a little bad. And finally, Kickstarter number five is put your head down and do it. I have a friend who runs marathons, and that is his mantra, and I use it a lot when I'm in any kind of a, a creative or any kind of a bind. Uh, I think a wonderful example of put your head down and do it is Philip Roth. Philip and I were here uh, at Bucknell at the same time. We became friends then. We have remained friends to today. So now we've been friends for 63 years. Philip, every day of his adult life, from the time he started writing until he stopped writing, two years ago at the age of 80, every day of his life, he would get up, have breakfast, go stand at his writing desk, and work and write until four in the afternoon. And he said some days he would salvage a whole sentence, and some days a phrase, some days just a word, but, and some days nothing. But then he'd get up the next day and start over again. Put your head down and do it. Uh, a Bucknell alumna who is CEO of one of this country's largest chains of successful retail stores, uh, told a group here on campus that she likes to hire Bucknellians because we have a bias for action. Yeah, I heard murmurs saying, yes, we do have a bias for action. We do. And I think that's part of the reason that our campaign theme is, is so right for, is so perfect for Bucknell. And I hope for the rest of your lives, you will keep saying, yes, we do, we do, I do. And luck, success, blessings, and thank you.